So this is the uh, Simulink tutorial for ECE 2305. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is from the, from, from the roots up, what we're going to do is we're going to be using Simulink and the environment and how to access this resource here at WPI. All right? So um, Simulink should be equipped on almost every computer that's operated by CCC, right? So if you look under this and you say, okay, all programs, and you go down, there should be, yeah, MATLAB. And most computers that are operated by the CCC should have the latest version of MATLAB, which should be 2014A. So the way the math works works. The way the math works works um, is usually every year they give two releases of MATLAB. So A is usually the spring release. It comes out in April. Uh, the B version of every year comes out in October, and they're just constantly updating. So their cycle's pretty... Um, uh, pretty intense. So every year, uh, every six months, new product, new product, new product, new product. And usually they introduce some very fancy and elaborate tools. So let's say if I open this up, what you're going to get is something that looks like this. So you have essentially um, this little command window, which most of you should have seen if you've used MATLAB before. Um, you have a folder. So right now uh, the path is described here. Uh, variables in your workspace, their names and such. But what I'm going to do, like, let's say you're doing this at home. Suppose you don't want to be here until 3 o'clock in the morning doing 2305 work, right? Yeah, none of us want to do that. We want to be in our own home, on our own sofa, and we want to access this, right? So this is the trick that I would do. So first of all, this hands-on project, right, hands-on experiment, number two, doesn't really have any sort of, like, uh, connection to the latest and greatest version of MATLAB. Um, I would say if you're using MATLAB 5, you might be out of luck. Yeah, MATLAB 5 is what I used many, many moons ago, right? So, and, and yeah, I mean, like, yeah, we're talking 20 years ago. So, on, so what we're going to be looking at is how can you access MATLAB remotely? So you don't have to download it from the internet um, or, or anything like that, or use a student version, but rather have the full-blown version of MATLAB at your fingertips. And the way you would do it is you would use remote, remote desktop. So I, you can try Hertz, you can try Ohm, you can try AMP, you can try HUT. So these are the ECE remote servers. I believe the CCC one's Windows, windows.wpi.edu. So either way, um, I believe my, my grad students have mentioned that AMP is somewhat seldomly used. You might notice that this resource, these remote, um, remote Windows desktops, some are more used than others, especially those folks that do like electromagnetic modeling. They use up a lot of computation cycles. So, um, yeah, so let's click on that. So let's, let's give AMP a whirl. Ah. So let's say you're faced with this and it's like, oh, I don't know what my domain is. What you do is you do ECE net. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> use another. Okay, so you can use ECE net and then go to password and then use your WPI ECE password, which should be different, um, except say yes. You connect, you agree to the terms and conditions, which mean your firstborn is owned by WPI. No, <laughs> just kidding. Don't you read the fine print? No, just kidding. And what happens is, miraculously, you should be an AMP right now. Uh, why am I doing this? How come I'm so familiar with this, except for the part about the ECE net thing? Because if you're using Linux or using Mac, um, it's, you know, just to keep things standard, if you want access and help and stuff, especially in a Windows environment, this is the easiest thing to do. So then what you can do is you go into start, click all programs, uh, there's MATLAB, I believe, yeah. So we have just a slightly older version of this, of MATLAB, so we have 13B, so it's from 2013 and October release, but good enough. All right, so we'll start up. Sometimes you might want to know who's on, like, you know, how much memory is being used and who's on it and everything. So you can always use, like, um, a, ta a task manager and see, like, you know, who else. Uh, can you see other people? 
show processes from other users. Ah, oh, they disabled it. So one thing is you can always say, you can always look at, in this case, I believe that that's eight cores. You can see how much memory is being used. So in case, ah, here's the other users. So in case you feel that uh, for some reason um, the computer seems sluggish or every few seconds it seems to jam and it, transmit, uh, it continues a bit, then jams, and then uh, you can continue processing and then jams, find another station. It sounds like somebody's doing some com computationally heavy um, work. Oh, there's my PhD student. So anyways, so what happens is now you're in MATLAB. So what you might want to do now, so there's several ways to get to Simulink. So you can either click Simulink library up here, or you can type it down here. So if you type Simulink, what will happen is um, some window is going to pop up, and you're going to have uh, what they call a block library. All right? Come on. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey, let's go for coffee, and we'll come back. It'll, it'll be open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So while I'm killing time, no, just kidding. Wow. Who? OK, I, I, now I'm curious. Who's running? See, as you can tell, I'm, I'm kind of impatient. Processes, performance. Doesn't seem to be so bad. Anyways, while this is starting up, so what ends up happening is you run Simulink this way. So how about while this is chugging along, it's almost like a cooking show. After 45 minutes, this is what you get. Either that or the gods are not working with me today. Uh, OK. This is awkward. OK, so it's just not showing up. All right, so let's do the following. Kill. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> just as I was about to kill it. So what happens is you're going to get this thing. So what happens is, as opposed to MATLAB, where you have like you know text commands, text functions. Oh, do I have two? Oh, I can't believe that. Oh, is that or is that from the other one? Now, now I'm confused. I'm not. You know, it might be popping up from here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, or you can do it graphically. Boom. All right. So what happens is this is the equivalent of all your functions, but they're in graphical version. So what you have as, as a very basic set of functions, you have things like commonly used blocks. You have continuous and discontinuous functions, discrete, <coughs> logical operators, sinks and source. So sinks and source, we're going to be using a lot, especially sources, because sources generate signals. Right? So I'm, and so what happens is these are all the basic functions that come with your standard simulink libraries. And then everything else beyond that, all these guys are essentially the add-ons for very specific courses. We probably will not be using things like communication systems toolbox. That's something that you'll be using more in like a 4305 class. Um, you have computer vision, which is more for robotics. Uh, control systems again, DSP if you're taking 4703, and the list goes on and on and on. So you might ask, okay, how do I create a blank model? So what you would do, new mo you click new model, and what you're going to get is a white canvas, this guy here. And so let's say I want to create a sine wave. So this tool's really cool because in literally seconds, what you can do is drag and drop source. You can uh, drag a, a sink, and then you can do everything in between. So what I'm going to do is, let's say we go to source. And there's a variety of different sources. You can use band-limited noise. Chirp signals are cool. Um, you can have inputs from, from the MATLAB environment. But what we're going to look at is sine wave. And what you do is you click and drag and drop, and it will be plopped down onto your Simulink environment. Now, suppose I want to visualize this fine waveform. What do I do? You go to sync now. So sync means uh, the information at the end of your processing gets dumped somewhere. So in this case, I want to dump it to a scope. I want to visualize this. 
A lot of the questions that you'll be asked is, show me this, show me that, in both time and in frequency domain. So here, the really, a really cool function is scope. Again, drag and drop, and then this is the fun thing. So what happens is you have this little mouse pointer, right? What you want is you want to position it over the output port, this little triangular thing here on the sync sine wave block, and drag, 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 until it makes connection with the input port to the scope. And let go, and you've got yourself a connection. If you don't have a connection, you're going to get that dashed red line, right? Now, how do we customize? So we can cl double click on sine wave. Come on. And we have already a different set of parameters that we can set up. You can set up the amplitude, in this case, to be 1. Um, you can use simulation time. So this is one of those things in Simulink that I absolutely love. What happens, I'm being sarcastic, sarcastic mode off. What happens is, Simulink, what happens is the time scale, the 10 seconds and such, doesn't really have a correlation to the real world. It's just like 10 Simulink seconds, right? It's like the currency. But it is possible that if you know approximately how fast you're processing, that you can sort of guesstimate how fast this will run in real time. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay? So you can use external signals and stuff. Don't worry about that block. You can we can play around with the bias. And we can play around with the frequency we can, and the phase and sampling time. So let's now take this guy and say, OK, apply. And then the scope, if you double click this guy, as you double click this guy, there we go. What you get is this little box. And this guy's really cool. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play. I'm going to uh, click run. OK? And now it's thinking. Do, 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 Ah, look, it's a sine wave. I'm excited. I can now retire. No. <laughs> no, I've got like 30 more years to do that and a mortgage to pay. So what happens is now this is actually a really cool visualization. So let's say. So there are several things you can do. So, OK, sine wave, that's cool. What I can do is there are some things. Like, let's say I want not 10 seconds of waveform. I want 50 seconds of waveform. So you enter 50. You click play again. And now you've got 50 seconds of waveform. Notice that you have a little bit of a resolution issue. So let's zoom in. I think let's zoom in. Boop. And what happens is, and this is really painful for me because I remember there was a professor when I was 19 years old. I think it was like power, power systems engineer. Yep, I remember that. And it was my first time I used MATLAB. I produced plots like this. It looked like jaggedness and stuff. It looked like a mountain range. And then I brought it to him, and he says, I don't know what that is. I say, but, 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 but it's, a, it's a sign function. And he says, it does not look like sign to me. <gasps> my feelings were hurt. I was turned off on power and never to return to again. But what happens is this is a resolution issue. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go into configure, right? So where is it? So simulation. And so what you can do is the model configuration parameters. Do, 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 do. So obviously, when you run things for the first time, it's going to take a little bit of time in order to set things up. But once you're set, it, it, it should be, um, as they say in Boston, wicked fast. Okay. Um, all right. So what happens is you can set these things up. And what's really nice about Simulink is that you can play, play around with, with a variety of different uh, um, features and such. So, so right now, what you can do is right, uh, most of the default is cool. For the most part, you can. So I wouldn't touch any of this unless it says so in the, in, the, um, in the handout. But for instance, we had a resolution issue. So what would we do? Let's go back to this guy, to the sign, and what we have is sample time. And right now, it's a zero, right? So we can play around with this guy. So sample time. 
Yeah, so it should be continuous. See, that, that's how... I'm so what we can do is we can play around with this. Say apply. And now what you've got, instead of zero, you have something that's slightly more smoother than before. Right? So what happens is you can essentially affect your waveform. So suppose now I want to have a bias. Let's say I give it a bias of 1. And now rerun it. Now what I've got is, instead of centered around 0 on the x-axis, it's now lifted by essentially a voltage of 1. So I've now applied a DC bias to the signal. If you really want to do cool things and just keep this way from going, 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 what you can also do as time is you just put, and I think it's INFTY. Ah, it was worth a shot. I think it's INF. It's one of those, see? So, ah, there we go. So what you've got here now is that this simulation will run for infinity unless your computer suddenly turns off or something like that. So what you've got, let's just kill it. So what you've got essentially is this drag and drop approach. You can also uh, add stuff to this. So for instance, let's suppose I want to add two sine waves. And all this junk here in the MATLAB window, just it's whatever sort of output. So let's say I add two sine waves. So go back to source. Add two signs, and then let's go, where's math operations? Here we go. And I do add. So you're going to need to do this for something like, let's say, the FM model. Uh, yeah, it's a little tricky. Come on. Yay. Same thing here. And same thing there. Oh, OK. Now what I've got is, let's say I have this guy here, amplitude 1, bias 1. So let's make this guy 0.25. We put the bias back down to 0. Sample time 0.1. Phase is that. Apply. Um, let's say we choose a, a slower frequency for this waveform here. So let's say sample time also 0 0.1. Frequency, let's choose a slower one. Let's say 0.25. Apply. And suppose we run this now. Well, actually, you can't see it. So let's just do it for, again, 20 seconds or something. And so what you've got now, essentially, is a superposition of two waveforms, one that is four times the frequency of the other, but also one quarter of the amplitude superimposed on a slower frequency on top of it. So you're going to need to do this for something like FM. So, so how do you save something like this? So you, you see all this graphical stuff. What you do is you click Save. And then I could, you can save it. I, like if, 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 if all of you, you should save it in wherever, whatever drive you can back up. So that's the one thing I hear all the time. My dog ate my homework. My computer burnt uh, up or something. I hear this all the time in MQPs. If any of you do an MQP, always back up. I, a number of times, like, you know, at the most critical time of the year, and we need the result, all of a sudden, computer crashes, and it's, it's no one backed up and stuff. So let's say I save it on my desktop here. I create a new fol folder. I call it ECE2305. I call it lab2. And then I call it test, or foo. Let's call it foo. And then what happens is you save. Now foo is saved. It's going to be something called an SLX file. And then you can close it and bring it back later on. All right? So other cool functions. So you might want to know, how do you show this in the spectrum domain, right? So how do you show the frequency of that? So there's a really cool feature in your web browser. What you do is you type in search for, mm, I don't know, spectrum. And it searches. Again, awkward silence. So how's life? How, how are things, guys? <laughs> and what happens is, what this search mechanism will do is it will go through all available packages. And there should be something called Spectrum Analyzer. 
If you buy a spectrum analyzer, like the one I have in my lab, it's about $10,000. You use this one, it's free, and it's software, and it's cool, and does almost everything that you want to do entirely in the simulation domain. <sighs> yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't even realize that. Bad me. Thank you. So what ends up happening, so as this is chugging along, it's going to find everything like, ah, there we go. So what it's going to show is a variety of different tools that you can use. So that includes, for instance, this guy here, which is quite important. So this guy here is the spectrum analyzer. So you drag and drop it, just as before. And what Spectrum Analyzer does is it transforms your time domain signal into the frequency domain. You're going to be doing this as well in your hands-on experiment too. So what happens is you double click. Boy, this is slow. Someone must be running a job. And what it's going to do on first use is going to initialize everything. That's what's taking all its sweet time. And ultimately what it's going to do is it's going to take your time domain information and convert it into that uh, frequency plot that we talked about before, the Fourier analysis stuff that we, we, I mentioned, but we did not go into any um, mathematical detail. And so, okay, now it's running. Okay, thank you, MATLAB. So what happens is nothing's there. So let's run this for infinity, because usually that's really cool. So int, and we click run. There we go. So what we've got, so let's say we zoom in. So what do we have? It looks pretty cool, huh? Um, what we've got here, let's zoom in on this stuff because that's actually really interesting. What you've got here, to me, when I see this, I say, you've got two sine waves on each other. And you might say, how do I know that? So what happens is, to me, a sine wave will produce one of these, one of this pair of two spiky stuff, right? So Batman ears. So that's a single one. If I have two sets of sine, uh, if I have two sine waves, I'm going to have two sets of those spiky things on either side of the origin. And so this tells me, and what does this mean? So I have a sine wave, and its frequency looks like, mm, looks pretty small. Um, and then you have another one that's getting closer. I'm not sure if this is normalized, so that, that has to be worked on. But what happens is I have one sine wave that has a higher amplitude but a lower frequency. So the height tells me how strong that sine wave is. And I have a one with a lower amplitude or a lower power, sorry, and a higher frequency superimposed on top of it. Just for fun, before we call it a day, let me add... So you can click on Add, and you can actually add a third. I think so, right? You can add actually a third. Yeah, there we go. So if you want to add a third sine wave, you can do that. And what you're going to get is three pairs of peaks on either side of the origin. All right? So any questions about Simulink? All right. So with that, um, like any questions, let me know. I have office hours tomorrow. So that concludes our simulink tutorial.